I'm joined now by Colonel Richard Kemp. He's, <laughs> apologies, he's the former commander of British forces in Afghanistan. Uh, good afternoon to you, Richard. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, apologies for the frog in the throat just there. Um, can I ask you, first of all, about these um, Brits? We know six have died. I don't know whether we're counting that as seven now, that we know that the death of this, uh, the younger sister of these two British girls, um, absolutely harrowing. Can't imagine what that family is going through. In terms of how information is being sort of pieced together in what is effectively a war zone in Gaza, um, what are the prospects of us finding out for sure whether the other sister is being held by Hamas and getting her back? Well, I know that the Israelis are working extremely hard um, to uh, find out where the hostages are, what condition they're in, and try to figure out a way of getting at, getting them back. And that obviously includes any British hostages and, and the much larger number of Israeli hostages as well. So it's, it's, it's not something we can predict, I don't think, and it's probably one of the most toughest missions that the Israelis have in this conflict is getting those hostages back, but it is a very high priority for them. And this will be a big factor, will it not, in terms of the ground offensive that we'll be hearing so much about, the imminent ground invasion by the uh, Israeli Defence Forces. And yet there is now some question mark about what is going to happen there and when, uh, with the uh, news that Joe Biden, the US president, is going to be travelling to Israel tomorrow. What do you think that tells us about the likelihood of a ground invasion going ahead and when it will go ahead? Well, um... The Israelis will do it in, in the time they judge suitable. They've, they've spent a lot of time now building up their forces, preparing them and training them. And you don't just send troops in without pretty detailed rehearsals because they're facing a tough situation. I think perhaps the ground off uh, operation has been delayed to an extent by a couple of days of rainy weather, um, which doesn't obviously affect much of the troops on the ground, but it does affect visibility from the air, which is critically important. And I would imagine, I don't know this at all, and no one really knows this, I don't think, apart from the Israeli government, but I would imagine that they're probably not going to launch a ground offensive against Hamas while President Biden's in town, which yeah. means it's not going to happen, I wouldn't have thought, today or tomorrow, possibly the day after. We'll have to see. But there are various other factors as well dictating what they do and when, and that includes the situation in the north. And we've seen a significant intensification of attacks by Hezbollah. Iran sponsored Hezbollah in the north against Israelis uh, in the north of their country. So that, that, and that will obviously have a bearing on what Israel does overall. And this is the thing, where you've got so many other players. We know that uh, the US Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, has been travelling around, uh, I think it's been to a total of six states in the Middle East, including Israel, uh, to try and obviously you know, get information, perhaps help broker a deal to get hostages back via Qatar, who uh, have, uh, are rather closer to Hamas. Um, um, is there any likelihood of any success there in terms of keeping other players out? These threats from Iran, this talk about a preemptive strike by them, whether it would be via Iranian forces or via the uh, Hezbollah uh, fighters who they help fund and support. Uh, what, what is the likelihood of, of this not exploding into a wider Middle East war? Well, I think um, there's every probability that the war will um, engulf Lebanon. In other words, Iran will push Hezbollah, which they fund, arm, support, direct, and in fact formed in the first place, push them to attack Israel. From the north and of course israel will respond to that with um as great a force as they possibly can even even while they're fighting inside gaza uh, then of course in further east we have syria where iran also has a significant presence there and they've been building that up with a view to carrying out further attacks i think one rocket so far only has been fired into israel from syria um, and israel's been taking preemptive action there beyond that obviously there's iran itself and it may be the, the need for israel to act directly against Iran at some point. Um, we will have to see what happens there. Beyond that, though, I don't think there's much chance of this uh, expanding elsewhere in the Middle East, with the exception, of course, of potential terrorist attacks in support of Hamas, as we've seen, uh, we've certainly seen in Europe already, and potentially that will go into the Middle East. But most Arab countries um, are on Israel's side here. Whatever they say, they're on Israel's yeah. side. They want to see Israel deal with Hamas and deal with it rapidly. 
Yeah. Um, There's a reason so... why Egypt hasn't opened its border. They, they don't want them either, indeed. Can I ask you about the United Nations, what they're saying? It's like the siege of Gaza, they're saying, um, it, and, the, and the evacuation order itself down from the north to the south. We've seen, we were told it was impossible. No way could people move. Well, it appear a million of them have moved, uh, of, of the 2.2, 2.3 million population from the north to the south. They've said this could be a crime against humanity. Lots of debate this week about what is a proportionate response, a reasonable response from Israel for the massacre of 1,400 of their own citizens on Israeli territory. Where do you stand on this in terms of the missile attacks on Gaza, the, the order or the re recommendation to evacuate to southern Gaza, civilian I mean, strikes on civilian buildings where Hamas uh, terrorists are believed to be, uh, you know, hold up and have their weaponry, uh, cutting off of food and water, electricity, we know we know that civilians are going to die. Israel knew civilians were going to die by doing that. Do you think that is a crime? Do you think that's a proportionate response? I think it is a proportionate response and it's not a crime and the UN should know better, as, as should other people who have accused Israel of committing war crimes already. Israel is extremely careful to minimise the loss of civilian life uh, on, on the enemy's side as well, of course, of their own. And they take they take enormous actions to do that. But what we shouldn't forget is that Hamas is embedded in the civilian population. They fight from within the civilian population. So you either you, you have two choices, and it is pretty straightforward. You either say, OK, we can't kill any civilians, and therefore we can't get to Hamas, and Hamas must keep in their positions, keep firing missiles, build up again for another attack across the border into Israel. That's one option. Obviously, no sane country would take it. The other option is to say we will have to attack, and destroy as much of Hamas as possible. And the only way to do that is attack them where they are, which is among the civilian population, and risk killing civilians, which is the case. It's, it, it's many civilians have died so far, and many more, unfortunately, will do. But you simply have no choice. And it's those people who say it's against the laws of war, it's a war crime, it's illegal, it simply is not. It's, it's, it's not permitted to deliberately target civilians, and Israel doesn't do that. Uh, but it is permitted to attack enemy when there are civilians around, as long as it's absolutely necessary for the defense of your country and the measures you take, the actions you take are proportionate to the military gain. In other words, if it is proportionate to attack a target where there are civilians, but, in, but, but the, what you achieve by doing that is preventing the deaths of your own population or your own soldiers, then it is not unlawful to do that, despite what the UN might say. And the same goes for their, Israel's advice, and it was only advice, it was a warning, which is required by the laws of war. We're going to attack in this area. Uh, you should leave. You, we advise you to leave. That is certainly, certainly it's not illegal. That is legal. That is what the laws yeah. of war require. What is illegal is Hamas trying to stop them as they've done. OK. Um, can I just ask you, just finally, briefly, if you would, uh, Colonel Richard Kemp, um, this br attack in Brussels last night, um, uh, two uh, Swedish football fans, we understand, shot dead, another injured, uh, by a man claiming to be a supporter of ISIS in terms of a video that he put out online. Uh, Brussels in lockdown, the highest terror alert now, big concerns about that. Uh, apparently in, it was a revenge attack for the killing of a Palestinian boy in New York, an American Palestinian boy there. Um, how fearful are you that we are going to be importing more terror attacks, whether supporters of ISIS, Hamas or whoever, um, to our shores here in the UK? What can we do about it? We've already got them. We, we've seen them in action. We've seen them carry out attacks in Manchester and in London and elsewhere uh, over a number of years now. They're, they're there. Many, many supporters of Islamic Jihad are present in the UK. And it's this sort of operation that Israel has been forced to do because of it, the barbaric attacks on its population. It's this sort of operation that inspires them further. We saw what during the heyday of the Islamic State when they were carrying out similarly depraved acts we saw that that garnered support among certain sections of the jihadist or the Islamic uh, community, not obviously all of them, but, but a number of them, yeah. which, who were inspired and motivated. We've seen, we've seen people, not I don't know about in the UK, but in the US, we've seen university professors, even university professors, I think at Cornell University, saying how inspired and encouraged they were by yeah. the Hamas attacks on Israeli civilians. This is, this is a sickness. And it, it infects all of our countries. And I think as this war progresses, I would imagine that the potential for terrorist attacks in our countries will increase. And it's why Israel has to deal with it as decisively and as quickly as they possibly can. They're not, 
they're not just fighting for Israel. They're fighting for all of us. They're fighting this sickness of Islamic Jihad, which, which has infected the whole world, but particularly in this region. OK, uh, thank you. Really interesting to talk to you, Colonel Richard Kemp, former commander of British forces in Afghanistan.